every town, the town in which you and I live, in the north, south, east, or west. Our homes, our work, our recreations make every town what it is. Every town is on the move, swinging in the rhythm of these United States. Yet in every town, happiness and security are challenged daily by an enemy. This enemy strikes oftenest at you. His name is tuberculosis. Here is a germ that causes this disease. All of us in every town bear the burden of tuberculosis, but it weighs heaviest on those whose loved ones it attacks and often kills. Tuberculosis blasts the hope of parents, parents who have made uncounted sacrifices for their children. Tuberculosis, maker of orphans. Every town teems with industry. In the Russian home, the enemy and his victims are easily forgotten. The youth of every town glory in their strength, their zest for life. Yet tuberculosis destroys 32,000 Americans under 40 each year. Here is Roy. He is young, he is strong, he is unafraid. He has heft and red blood. And here, in another of every town's many industries, is Julie, eager and capable. Yet that quitting bell has a welcome sound when the day's work is done. Life now really begins for Julie. Roy feels the same way about his whistle blast. Romance begins for Julie and Roy when they meet at the factory door. The old jalopy coughs and snorts, but it still goes places. To the rainbow, for instance, a rosy rainbow of promise. The young Americans in every town who work hard, play hard too. Gaiety, fun, companionship. These are tonics of normal every town life. Roy and Julie wouldn't miss their holiday swim for anything. Building health and strength in the fresh air. Carefree and happy. Hello? What is this? A hemorrhage from the lung? Every town's health guardians are on the job, ready to serve any and all. Luckily for Roy, there's a first-rate sanatorium in every town. Blood from the mouth, the physician knows, is not to be passed up lightly. Experienced hands, skilled eyes and ears, track down the cause of that hemorrhage. Get the facts together. All the odds and ends of facts. Sputum and blood samples are taken, and off they go to the laboratory. And very important, the magic eye of the X-ray. Only a shadow picture is produced, but the trained eye can read what's behind those shadows as clearly as you read the page of a book. The sputum sample is put through a rigid test. The microscope aids. The germ unmistakable. To the medical staff, these facts spell tuberculosis of the left lung, active, far advanced, and with a cavity. But if Roy plays the game, his chances are good. Treatment, absolute bed rest. And says the chief of staff, Bring this case up for review in one month. Tuberculosis certainly changes Roy's life. It puts a sudden stop to work and play and plans for the future. Rest and more rest. Rest for Roy, but not for the case finders. Every town's health workers know that each case of tuberculosis comes from some other case. Public health nurses inquire. 
From whom did Roy get it? To whom has he given it? Find out from his employer about his workmates. Is someone there who gave the disease to him? Is there someone else to whom Roy may have given it? This is how the germ gets from one body to another. Now, thorough but tactful detective work finds out about Roy's home, his work, his close associates. The nurse follows every clue. Roy's friends are interested. Here comes a clue easy to follow. Julie, where does she live? This nurse is a contact finder. Do you remember, Julie? That was lip contact, the surest way of transferring tuberculosis germs. Don't delay, Julie. Let the doctor decide. And Julie visits her physician. Besides a routine examination of the chest, the examination includes a tuberculin test, a simple skin test which tells whether tuberculosis germs have found a foothold in the body. Up-to-date physicians everywhere now use this test. If negative, it means no tuberculosis. If positive, it means search further. Julie returns. The test is positive. The spot where the solution was injected is slightly raised and reddish. Julie must be x-rayed. Here are the shadows. Expertly interpreted by her doctor, they say, early tuberculosis. Don't delay, Julie. The sooner treatment is begun, the more certain the cure. Bed rest now for Julie. Almost a vegetable existence, this, but reading helps. Good reading habits help Julie, as they have so many others to readjust her life. A friendly place, this sanatorium. The medical chief talks to all of the patients. By such means, modern sanatoria educate their patients in a new way of life. Listen in with all the patients to what the doctor says. Our sanatorium is but one of the many base hospitals of a great warfare. Here we train doctors, nurses, technical workers who carry on the battle. The sanatorium is a place to care for sick people and restore them to a useful life. Here the resources of medical science are put into practice in the treatment of the patient and the defeat of tuberculosis. Outside our sanatorium are other forces, health departments, health workers, educators who plan the strategy. The Tuberculosis Association brings the story of tuberculosis to the public by printed matter on the picture screen over the air. Throughout the country, tuberculosis associations, backed up by the National Tuberculosis Association, arm every town to make war on the enemy. For the physician, technical publications. For the public, clearly written information. All this made possible by the sale of Christmas seals. Julie listens and learns. Someday she will become one of the soldiers fighting tuberculosis. But first comes the business of getting better. And that means rest. What news of Roy after weeks of bed rest? The x-ray shadows tell Roy's doctor that the cavity in the lung is still open. The germs are still in his sputum. He needs special treatment. The doctor arranges for Roy a simple operation called pneumothorax. A local anesthetic comes first. Very gently, air is allowed to enter between the rigid chest wall and the soft lung tissue. By means of a series of these simple operations, 
the diseased lung is compressed long enough to heal. Meanwhile, Roy's doctor calls a staff meeting to study Roy as a person. The librarian reports what he reads. The occupational therapist explores Roy's interests. And the nurse? Roy's heart interest is no secret to his nurse. From the state rehabilitation agent, the doctor learns more about Roy's former job. He must give this up too. The whole trained staff helps the doctors to understand Roy and his problems. Time brings improvement. This earns new privileges for Roy. The state rehabilitation agent knows about jobs and training for jobs. Roy's doctor calls on this knowledge to help plan a new life for Roy. First, Roy needs to know himself. How fast and how accurately can Roy do clerical work? Does he have mechanical aptitude? How readily does he see pattern, size, design? How well do Roy's two hands work together? Has he much knack for handling small tools? The answers to such questions tell Roy a lot about himself. Now the doctor couples what he knows about Roy with what the rehabilitation agent knows of jobs and training. Together, they discuss various occupations. A final rehabilitation plan is worked out with and for Roy. The rehabilitation agent and Roy's former employer work out a retraining plan in a growing industry. Roy continues to improve. He earns further privileges. Ah, what a privilege it is after months in bed just to amble out of doors. However, leisure should not mean idleness. Roy learns new forms of play more suitable to his condition. A man's hobbies may have much to do with his health. And then there's Julie. For what job shall Julie be trained? Homemaking is a job too. Keeping house efficiently spares energy and saves money. Julie will need her energy to keep well. A smooth running job, even in housekeeping, is less tiring. Her doctor knows that well. So Julie is taught how to avoid hard ways in homemaking. One can learn to work more efficiently. Roy's day of graduation from the sanatorium comes at last. And it's goodbye to the sanatorium, but Roy takes with him what he has learned. Rehabilitation now goes ahead full speed. Medical checkup is not neglected. The healed lung holds firm. Roy's training is checked by the rehabilitation agent. It leads to a job.
Roy has been helped to prepare for a job he can do. The road back, always long and often tedious, leads at last to happiness. Roy and Julie, they have found the way back.